G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be discussing a topic that has come up in a few videos of mine, as well as generally along the community for most of War Thunder's life. In fact, this particular change has never ever occurred in any meaningful sort of volume. It just hasn't really come around at all, and I'm not talking about decompression. I'm talking about a couple of problems, really. So, let's unpack this, airfield strafing, and runway camping. Well, airfield camping, airfield strafing, you know what I'm saying. Abusing the base AA, whether it be too weak or too strong, in order to either strafe someone out on the runway before they can take off and get some speed, or alternatively, camping there and waiting for all of your enemies to die by it. Both of these moves are considered uh, not really great, not really showing great sportsmanship, and are generally frowned upon by a lot of the community. However, there really has never been a proper solution. There have been people who have suggested some interesting things, like uh, surface-to-air missiles, or shilkers, or some other increased ability of the air, to air or the ground-to-air capabilities. And some of these could be very interesting while, while implemented this way. They could add a little bit of extra immersion, and they could also improve the sort of general feel of the way these particular mechanics work. Perhaps one could be viable out to a certain range and another could be viable out to another range. Now, obviously these have their own issues. So, let's discuss the first one. We're going to talk about airfield camping. So airfield camping is basically for those of you who don't know, when an opponent sits behind their air, AAA and sits in that area, waiting for someone to die. They are not there to gain altitude, they are not there to repair and rearm, they're not there to refuel, they are simply there to hopefully get the enemy killed by AAA. Now, a lot of people will understand exactly why this is an issue, because this doesn't involve any skill, and in fact, Airfield AA is almost entirely RNG, and so when this happens, it is extremely frustrating. You might die in an instant. Alternatively, you might have to wait and perhaps wait for the vehicles for them to pop up before you even get close to winning or salvaging a match. And this is extremely frustrating and extremely unnecessary. The flip side of that issue is airfield strafing. When someone is genuinely trying to land, rearm, repair, perhaps gain a little bit of altitude, the opponents simply go along, strafe them, and then win the game that way. Again, it doesn't require any skill, it doesn't require any tactics, you just go in, click on something that's stationary, and win. Now for me, that's really a disappointing way to end a match, and whilst I've done it many times, and I probably will do it many times in the future, it's kind of a last resort thing. You only do it really if you are either the last opponent left on the enemy team, uh, in a desperate situation, or alternatively, if you just want to get the match over and done with. And in my J35D video that I just posted, it should be in the top right corner of the screen there, I lose to a runway strafer. Now, my intention was to go back to rearm repair, and of course, to try and salvage the match. It was a match where I had gotten more kills than the entire team combined, and I wanted to try and make that a nice 8 kills in the Draken, which would have been a basically a record for me. However... I didn't get that opportunity. Now, often throughout War Thunder's history, Gaijin have attempted to solve one of these problems at a time, whereas they would make the other one worse. So there was a time uh, early on when a Airfield AA was quite powerful. Gaijin received a lot of complaints about that, and as a result, a lot of people just, uh, you know, went to the forums, went to Reddit, everything like that, couple of people probably quit the game because of it, and of course, what did Gaijin do? They changed it. They made the airfield AA a lot weaker, and as a result, everybody was runway strafing. Now, it was extremely risky to do, but when you pulled it off, you could potentially get up to 3, 4, 5 kills just by clicking on stationary targets, and again, like I said at the beginning, it doesn't require any skill to do that. It may have been the uh, enemy plane's faults for not taking enough fuel, perhaps wasting their ammo, perhaps getting damaged, but I think that there is a better solution somewhere in between. Gaijin has constantly changed the ability of the AAA from either laser accurate to simply lazy and, dead and, and 
useless, like a toothless tiger. And I think there is a really good middle ground solution. And I'd like to share that with you. So, since our two problems are sometimes the airfield AA is too powerful, sometimes the airfield AA is too weak, sometimes people abuse it to strafe and sit there for a long time, and sometimes people don't have enough time. We have two sort of metrics that we can work with there. We have the strength of the AA, and we have time. So, what do we do? It's quite simple, actually. You think about how long it might take for someone to repair rearm from, say, the range of the AA is 6 kilometers, because 5 kilometers is about the range that you will see the AA on the little radar in your top right-hand corner of the screen. So, let's say 6 kilometers, which is 1 out, and at jets, that's really not a big deal, because you can cover a kilometer quite quickly. Now, at 5 kilometers, if you were to stay within that margin, within, say, a 3 or 4 minute period, you would get absolutely annihilated by a surface-to-air missile. And this surface-to-air missile could be a nice modern sort of fixed place uh, m missile. It could be one of those weird truck-driven ones, if that was a thing. I think, I think it is a thing. Uh, it could even be some weird surface-to-air missile thing on a Shilka. Either way, it would be absolutely laser accurate, and it would be extremely deadly. You would be dead within, say, 10 seconds, and you would get a little warning, saying that you're in the area, and if you proceed any further, you'll get shot down. Now, if you enter a, say, 3 kilometer radius within the airfield, you will have some sort of gunned anti-air, like a Shilka, maybe a, an M163 VADS, or a Sergeant York, or something with proximity rounds that would be absolutely deadly. Say, I don't know, maybe automatics if you really want to be that that uh, sure about it, if you will. It doesn't have to be a certain vehicle. It could be something that's not even in the game yet, and realistically it doesn't even matter. Hell, it could be the weird CIWS, close-in weapon system things, that they used to shoot down missiles on ships nowadays. It could be some sort of early version of them. It doesn't really matter. We have a bit of creative freedom here, and of course, whilst we have to do some adherence to historical stuff, if you will, we have a little bit of uh, opportunity. Maybe we can imagine things a little bit. Or let me know in the comments section what would be more appropriate. Perhaps you know something that they definitely used during, say, the Vietnam War or the Gulf War, or even in modern times, it doesn't really matter. It's just a concept that I'm going to put out there. So within that three kilometer range, you will have the absolutely deadly, basically you will get no warning because between those two kilometers, you'll see the warning pop up on your screen that there'll be surface to air missiles. And if you decide that you're going to ignore that, you're going to get absolutely shot down and destroyed because your intention is to go in there and runway strafe. Now, how do I know that? Well, the answer is because after, say, three minutes, or four minutes, or whatever you'd like to make it, that airfield AA shuts down. It stops for about, let's say, one minute, just for argument's sake. Then you would have your opportunity to kill out the strafers. Maybe it could be four minutes, maybe it could be longer than the actual time that it is effective for, and this gives you an opportunity to go in and perhaps deal with someone before the airfield AA guns and missiles are back online. And this could simulate something like reloading. This could perhaps simulate something like uh, perhaps changing out barrels or perhaps reloading. And I think that would be both historically accurate and interesting in terms of a mechanic. It would also introduce skill. And at the same time, it would give those people who need to repair and rearm an opportunity to do so. And at the same time, give those who would like to camp the inability to do so for more than about three minutes. Now, at lower tiers, this could obviously be lessened, so perhaps you could have the 88mm flax sitting there at uh, five, for the five kilometer range, and as you get into, say, one and a half, uh, it opens up with 20mm guns. That could be another option for lower tiers, and I think that that would also work, because this particular strategy, whilst it's not an ideal blanket solution, it can be tweaked for these sorts of lower tiers, and it doesn't really have to be um, like super historically accurate either. As I understand it, most of the guns that are manned at the airfield are German 88s. And um, from from memory, I don't I don't remember when the Americans had them. Correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, I may actually be wrong. 
Regardless, I think this is a step in the right direction at least. I think it's a good idea and it has a lot of merit to it because those people that want to play faithfully have that opportunity to do so and those that don't will obviously get shafted after a small time has elapsed. The times of the guns being effective and the rework times, uh, they, can, they can be adjusted. We can talk about them in the comments. But the other thing I would like to mention is if a second plane enters, then that timer will add 50%, and 50% less for each time you go. And so, in theory, you could add an infinite amount of planes, but you will still only get up to, say, 8 minutes total. So if in total the time was 4 minutes, you would get a grand total time if you added an infinite amount of planes to less than 8 minutes. And so as a result, you would never be able to get that same amount of time back. You would have to leave the area for, say, the 4 minutes it takes to reload or the 5 minutes it takes to, to reload the guns and the missiles. And once you do that, chances are you might be dead. Or alternatively, you might not have that opportunity to rearm and repair anymore or you've gotten yourself into a big dogfight and now you've fully committed to that external battle but at least you had the chance at least the game gave you the chance and i think that that is the most important part the game needs to provide a skillful way for you to deal with these opponents but it also needs to prevent people from abusing it and i think this is the best middle ground some of the potential downsides I can think of right off the top of my head is uh, people that take min fuel, perhaps they might run out of fuel, need to go back, and they're given that sort of crutch. But realistically, that's not a really terribly bad thing. Uh, and in most cases, if someone takes min fuel and has to leave midway through a battle, they kind of miss out on the other half of the battle. So if it goes sour really quickly, they're going to have a really low chance of pulling through anyway. Uh, and as a result, I don't really think that that's a massive downside. If anyone can actually think of some proper downsides, do let me know in the comments, because I have been thinking of this idea for a very long time, and I've been sort of polishing it up in my head as I go along, and I finally decided to share it with the War Thunder community. If you guys would actually like to uh, let me know what you think, I would really appreciate that. If you would have anything to add to it, I think that would be extremely helpful. Uh, and of course, if you have any contradictions or any uh, objections to the idea, definitely let me know in the comments section below. I might actually go ahead and make a detailed forum post, but I'm really, really short on time lately. I've basically got a lot on my plate at the moment. Uh, but if someone would like to do that, do let me know in the, in the comments or d DM me on Discord or something like that. And maybe we can sort of sort something out in that regards because I would definitely love to see this added to the game. I have made plenty of videos where I'm either the last one left alive and I don't have the opportunity to land and I get runway strafed, or the, other, the reverse happens. I just want to get the game over and done with and I just go ahead, hold left click and kill someone on the runway just to get the game over and done with. And whilst I think, oh well, that sort of happens, that's part of life in War Thunder, I really don't want that to be a part of War Thunder life. I'd really like the opportunity to deal with people who want to camp and I'd also like the opportunity to land rearm repair perhaps J out if I have to uh, if the game is going too sour but that's the sort of thing that I would like to see in War Thunder I think that would be a great quality of life improvement and I think that a lot of people will agree with me anyway ladies and gents thank you very much for watching wow I can't English but thank you for watching anyway if you guys would like to have a look at the air models link down below, you'll find some quite high quality diecast and resin models. Some of them I have at home right next to me. They are absolutely fantastic. And you might see a photo of them on Instagram if I can be bothered to post it to there. If not, check out the link in the description below. They're fairly well priced for what they are. They ship worldwide. I haven't been able to complain about them at all. As you guys know, I do love a good complaint. Anyway, ladies and gents, Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.